Time for a little update on our garbage wine. It has been fermenting for two weeks and fermented dry down to 1.000 on our hydrometer reading. So it was time to get it off that fruit. We're going to attempt to quick clarify this wine because we're only gonna get about four gallons out of this after we get the fruit strained out. I'm intentionally not showing you what the fruit looked like because there might be some people with uneasy stomachs that don't wanna see that mess. What we're putting in here is called Super Clear, and I'll write a blog article on this at some point, but Super Clear is a two-part fining agent made from shellfish. Both parts of this bond differently to the particles that are suspended in your wines or your meads. So in effect, it creates big clumps that are heavy and fall down to the bottom, giving you a clear product. There are all kinds of different fining agents. I use Sparkaloid a lot. Um, which is kind of a clay powder, and it works pretty well, but not as fast as Super Clear. Super Clear does come with some cost, so I don't recommend it for every brew, but I have a ton of this on hand, so I figure why not use it for this so I can get it out of the carboy and into bottles and uh, reduce the amount of time that I've got a lot of head space on top of the finished product. So this is what it looks like freshly racked and in one hour I will come back and add the other component of the super clear. And it's been one hour. So now that that first part of the packet has had some time to work, we're gonna add the second part of that packet and it will go to work doing the second portion of the fining process. You wanna give that a really good shake so it's distributed throughout the wine. And a few days later, I am adding Campton tablets and sorbate to stabilize it because we will be back sweetening this product. So we don't want the yeasts to thrive or reproduce then we can add sugar and we won't have a risk of it fermenting again in the bottles. So a few days later we have a crystal clear stabilized product and it is time to bottle. I'm starting the bottling process by racking this into a bottling bucket to get it off of that yeast cake that is sitting at the bottom. And while I'm racking this, I'm gonna add three cups of sugar. This will take it up to a semi-sweet. And there's a lot of carbon dioxide gas still suspended in this. So I'm gonna stir this a little bit to combine the sugar that's okay, that heavy CO2 will kind of sit on top and protect it. I'm also adding Campton tablets, one per gallon. And this will again, reduce the likelihood that yeast will be thriving in the bottle and fermentation will kick off again. There will be a lot of sugar in here and we don't want the yeast to ferment and create bottle bombs as this ages in the basement. I ran all of these Coca-Cola bottles through a hot cycle with OxyClean in the dishwasher, and then I brushed the insides with a bottle brush while soaking them in sanitizer and placed them back on the dishwasher rack as a kind of staging area right before bottling. Using our handy bottling wand, we will bottle all of this wine and then cap all these bottles with crown caps. This made 42 total Coca-Cola bottles worth of fruit wine. I did pull a taste in my Santa Claus mug, and granted this is only three weeks old, so it was still very hot and very boozy, but it had a great fruity flavor, like a fruit punch, that I can tell will only improve, and we'll probably be saving this to drink for backyard barbecues this summer, so it'll spend about five months in the bottle before we get to it. I can't wait to taste it this summer. I hope you enjoyed this second part of our how-to on how to turn fruit from your freezer into wine. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified of our upcoming videos. Check out our website at doingthemost.org for recipes and other how-tos. And please follow us on Instagram and Pinterest.